flow. Behind me, you see the oldest continuously inhabited village in the United States. It's Walpi Village on the Hopi Reservation in Arizona. Sometimes it's referred to as Mother Walpi because it stands above all the other villages throughout the series of mesas on the Hopi Reservation. Take a moment to just feel the ancientness of this place. It's still standing and it still pretty much looks like this. I've been there a few times and always with a sense of the ancient profound, deep wisdom that created the place and that endures in the Hopi tradition. I want to talk a little bit about rites of passage. Another term for rites of passage would be initiation, and I'll be using those terms interchangeably. A long, long time ago, our ancient ancestors lived very differently than we do today because they lived so much in continuous connection with the earth. And they had a very different view of parenting, of raising children, of bringing children into the world than we do today. Because for many of those traditions, raising a child started the moment a mother realized she was pregnant. In many of those ancient villages, people gathered around the new mother, the prospective mother, and listened, listened to her and listened to her body to find out what this child was bringing. Because it was believed that every single child was bringing a series of important gifts for the community. And so they listened and they prepared themselves. They prepared themselves for the arrival of this child because the, the child they believed was another teacher of wisdom. And they also knew that around the time of puberty, the child would need to experience a rite of passage. And that rite of passage involved the male elders taking the young boys, the female elders taking the young girls outside of the village somewhere into nature to experience an ordeal. Why? Well, the idea was not only to connect the child with nature, but to connect the child with him or herself. And so an ordeal was arranged in which the child would have to do something that would involve a lot of stress, a lot of contemplation, a lot of wit, and it would not be easy to survive. It was designed to compel the child to go deep within him or herself, to reach down into that place of the deeper self that we don't have access to on the outside in just our everyday living. And so, you know, the elders would not be far away during this ordeal, but they couldn't help the child or do the ordeal for them. Now, this was always risky because every initiation was a brush with death. And so, we ask ourselves, well, why would they take that risk? They would take that risk because they knew from experience that if a child was not initiated, if they didn't go through that, that rite of passage process, number one, they would never grow up. And number two, they would never really understand who they are. And they, the ordeal went on for usually several days. And then it was followed by, you know, going back to the village and being celebrated. The entire community celebrated 
the ordeal that this young person had passed through. They celebrated the young person, not just the ordeal. And through this experience, the young person then learned to take his or her place in the community, contribute to the community, be a leader in the community, and ultimately become an elder themselves. And so we look at this and we say, wow, how might our lives have been different if we as young people had been able to experience this? Sometimes I look at this and I remember stories about initiations that I have been told. And I long for that. How would my life have been different, I think? Well, Carl Jung, who was the famous Swiss psychologist, did a lot of investigation of initiations, traveled around the world to different indigenous cultures and villages to learn more. And as he came back from that research, he wrote about it. And one of the things he said is, you know, we don't have formal initiation ceremonies in Western culture, but we do have initiations. You know, we go through a divorce or we go through a tremendous loss like maybe a bankruptcy or a foreclosure or having a terminal illness or losing a loved one. And all of those are rites of passage. They might be small, comparatively speaking, or they might be enormous. The truth is that we all have various qualities of initiation every single day. And so we experience the initiation not as something that gets in our way. It's always an unwanted growth experience, usually. But what we do is we say, yeah, that's an initiation. That's a rite of passage. And I'm going to open to this rather than resist it because it has something to teach me. So that's you and me in our everyday lives. But what about our planet? In our planet, the same thing is happening. Our planet right now is experiencing an enormous rite of passage. Climate catastrophe, the coronavirus pandemic, unbelievable economic crisis, which we have not seen in this country since the Great Depression. Division, unbelievable, unprecedented division between people in this country which we haven't really seen since the Civil War. And so, as we look at all of these, we see the makings of a planetary rite of passage. And framing it that way, I think, for me, helps us respond in a different way than just saying, oh, this is terrible, this is horrible, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Or putting our heads in the sand and not looking. If we can look at it as a rite of passage, then we can open to it and we can say, I wanna be a student of this rite of passage. What does it want to teach me? And above all, what the rite of passage wants to teach every human being on this planet is that there is something within us that is greater than our small self, our rational mind, our human ego. That's the same thing in us that is in every child who goes through the initiation ceremony. That thing that they are compelled to reach down and touch and bring forth that's within you and within me. And even though we have not had formal initiation ceremonies, our work right now is to reach down and touch that thing, that in energy, that force within ourselves and let it change us and remake us. 
not just to be who we are meant to be, but to do what we are being called to do. And so I believe and I've experienced that the more I can open to what is taking place in our planet, ugly and horrible and terrifying as it is, the more I can experience it as a rite of passage, the easier it is for me to go through it, to navigate it, to learn from it. And so in this Sacred Odyssey course, we're going to be talking a lot about rite of passage and what it wants from us, what the global crisis wants from us. How do we respond? How do we act? If you ever get a chance to get to Walpi, Arizona, I hope you will, because it is a really amazing place. You can feel the ancientness of it. And it's way, way, way high upon one of the mesas, first mesa, they call it. You can see forever. And you are in the heart of ancient wisdom.